Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Rock Cut Review. I'm Erica. And I'm Ed. And uh, today we're talking about Michael Collins. All right. The whiskey. Yes. And also, what happens when a whiskey changes hands from one producer to another? Yeah. I hold in my hand the original Michael Collins whiskey. This is a blended Irish whiskey produced by Cooley Distillery. And what am I holding? You have the new Michael Collins. So Cooley, which was, for a minute, the only independent Irish distillery, uh, was producing Michael Collins. They got up, bought up by Bean Sun Tory. Heard of them before. Yeah, I think everybody has. So they stopped producing this. But... The, the ownership of it transferred over to Sazerac. And that's what I'm holding here. Yeah. So Sazerac, the owners of Buffalo Trace, probably most famous for that distillery. They're a little independent bottling thing. Oh, yeah. A little independent. A little mom pop. Yeah. A little, little micro distillery. Yeah. I don't think you've heard of them. Yeah. So they got the license. They started producing Michael Collins again in this new package. Fancy. This is yeah. the jacket. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't that pretty? So, who was Michael Collins? Tell me about him. Michael Collin was born in Clonakilty in County Cork. He was born near Clonakilty in Sam's Cross. Okay. That's what it says on the side of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I read literature. Michael was the third son in a big old family of eight. Yeah. Big Irish Catholic family. He's the youngest. He's the youngest. Also on the side of the bottle. Also on the side of the bottle. Uh, they call this edition, the Sazerac edition, is called The Prediction. And why is that? Because apparently on his deathbed, Michael's father made the prediction that one, his sis Michael's sister would become a nun, and two, that Michael would be a great man for Ireland. Here's my thing about that. Wait, is that all he said on his deathbed? Apparently. About his eight children. Only, only mentioned two of them, apparently. Okay. Uh, one, we don't know if that story is true. Okay. But two, like you, you're an Irish Catholic living in Cork at the end of the 1800s, saying that one of your children is going to enter the priesthood and one of your children is going to be a Fenian. It's kind of like me waking up tomorrow and being like, I think I'm going to have milk with breakfast. <laughs> It's not much of a prediction. That's why I didn't take bets on the other one. Yeah, right. like, these are the top two jobs. One of them's going to be a nun. One of them's going to fucking fight for independence. That's all I know. <laughs> Michael Collins was part of the independence movement, part of the Irish Republican Brotherhood, which was the underground secret brotherhood that was devoted to driving the British colonizer out of Ireland. Okay. He took part in both the 1916 Easter Rising in Dublin, and then also in the War for Independence from 1919 to approximately the end of 1921 as part of the original Irish Republican Army. After the War for Independence, the IRA split into two groups. Okay. One which favored the peace treaty that ended the war with Britain. One which did not. The peace treaty insisted that the Irish remain a dominion of the crown and anyone who took a seat in the Irish government had to pledge their loyalty to the king. So while they were an independent country called the Irish Free State, the members of the IRA who didn't like the treaty considered it basically still, you were being, still being colonized. Okay. So Eamon de Valera, who was on the other side with the IRA, formed Fianna, Fianna Fáil. And, um, what does that mean? Fianna Fáil is the Republican Party. Okay. And then uh, Michael Collins formed what was Cumann Gael, now known as Fine Gael, uh, which is the Irish party, the Gaelic party. Gotcha. They, those were the two sides facing off in the Irish Civil War, during which Michael Collins was ambushed by an IRA flying brigade and killed. 
The Irish independence movement has been somewhat tainted now because the IRA, or elements of it that became the provisional Irish Republican Army, went on to fight in the Troubles, which was a 30-year sectarian conflict from 1969 up until the late 90s. A lot of death, a lot of civilian casualties, a lot of horrific bullshit happened, and generally that's why the Augustine Herren, the IRA, is not seen as always the greatest liberators of Ireland and more as a sectarian terrorist group. It has very much tarnished yeah. the legacy of the IRA as a whole. One man's freedom fighter is another terrorist and all that. Yeah, and yeah. I came from a mixed Catholic and Protestant family, and well, we are very supportive of Irish independence and a united Ireland, you have to admit that the just the shit that happened during the Troubles and the civilian murders were just... Horrific. Horrific. Yeah. And not okay. But let's talk about the whiskey. Let's get to the booze. <laughs> Michael Collins from Cooley, double distilled, aged 4 to 12 years in ex-bourbon casks. Ooh, I love yeah. bourbon casks. This one from Sazerac, probably distilled at Middleton. That's where they got a bunch of their casks and stored some of them. Okay. So probably from Middleton. Um, triple distilled, we don't know what the casking was, and we don't have an age statement. One year. <laughs> yeah, right, and that actually wouldn't be allowed in Irish law. I know, but I <laughs> wanted to say a number, and I wanted it to be ridiculous. Shall we compare them? Let's do it. Which All one right. do you want to do first? Should we go with the outside one, which is the original? Yes. This is a little smoky. You think so? I think so. You think you get, I don't get, I do get Maybe an like more sulfury? Than smoky, but there's something that like reminds me of like a yeah, I do a get lesser peated scotch. I do get an acrid element, more leaning into like a barrel char thing than a smoky peaty thing. Yeah, there's something like dry fruit. Yeah, dry golden raisins. Yeah, I'm gonna drink it. Okay. Oh, I get a lot of that raisininess on the oh. taste. Yeah, raisins and bread. Very, very, it is pretty malty. It's got a malty character to it. Yeah, I think that's the bread thing. I mean, yeah. The bready thing. Better call. Yeah. Kind of a malted, malted milk thing. Yeah. Yeah. But there's not much going on. It's not super big and super flavorful, yeah. but you're right. There's an acrid kind of thing, a little bit of raisin, some maltiness, honey. Yeah. Pretty yeah. standard. It reminds me a lot of well water. <laughs> oh, sure. Like kind of irony, kind of minerally. Yeah. Sure. It just like there's a slight, bar like I would barely notice this alcohol with how quickly the taste goes away. What is the proof on this? I believe forty. Okay, yeah. Yeah, there's not much bite to this. No, it really isn't. Yeah, it's very much like an earthy, minerally thing, and then it's gone. Yeah, yeah, like you're right. Well water. You're right. Yeah, I don't get a lot of minerality on whiskeys, except for I will say this one: Base Jameson's and Linkwood. Are really the only ones, but you're right. There is a minerally kind of stony thing here. You want to get into the the Let's newer version? New one. This triple distilled. Triple distilled. Yeah, I don't even feel like they're really trying to copy Cooley here. I feel like they're just kind of doing their own thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which, like you know, not a bad thing. Yeah. No, for sure. Ooh, that is way sharper. Like there's a. It's got a bigger. I feel like the alcohol is more apparent. Yeah. First of all, and I think it's only it, this one's at forty percent too, right? As long as I know. Mm -hmm. Yep, forty percent. But I feel like the alcohol is more apparent. This smells a little fresher. It does smell fresher. Like yeah. I still get some dry element. It's like you still have those golden raisins, but you pour a little juice on it. Yeah, this is leaning. I feel like this is leaning much more orange or lemon. That's lemon. Lemon. lemon zest. It's lemon zest. Yeah. That's what it is. Good call. Or like lemon pound cake. Mm -hmm. Lemon pound cake, but with like fresh lemon on it. Yeah. Yeah. And a little apple too. little apple. This, also no bite. But the mineral is gone, and mm -hmm. I feel like the taste lasts longer. And I get yeah. that apple more on the taste. Yeah, I get it's fresh fruit. I get more carameliness. Okay. Caramel, a little bit of vanilla. But yeah, there's, there's still some fruitiness there. The original has more of a bready quality, like a brown bread quality. Yeah. And I think it's more grainy. More grainy, yeah. sure. Well, not even... See, grainy, I feel like, has a specific thing. Like, I, get, I guess it's grainy, but not in the way I think of, like, a young grain whiskey is, where yeah. it's really funky. But it is... It's just straight up... It's more earthy. It's earthy. Yes. Right. Rather than, like, baked bread. Right. It's it's an earthy dough. Yeah. 
Whereas the new version from Sazerac, that is like, that's kind of cakey, sweet, lemony. The classic notes of an Irish. Vanilla, caramel. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, The Michael, the original Michael Collins has more of that acrid, maybe a little bit more, yeah, that burned, ashy. Yeah. 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 Which one do you like better? The new one. You like the new one better? Yeah. Oh, I kind of disagree. I feel like it's all high notes. It's all high notes. It's got none of the the bass. I I could picture you saying that. Yeah. I mean, you just said it. But yeah, that's kind of what I imagine (laughs) you would say. This has, I feel like the original has a little bit more like character. It's a little harder, Mm -hmm. which is why I picture you enjoy it. This newer one, a little bit more easygoing. A little bit sweeter. Yeah. Which is what I'm into. More of those. Yeah. More of those caramely notes. Sure. Things don't have to taste like the earth. You like earthy things, Only though. with peat. That's it. You want smoky peat. Yeah, yeah, you want smoky earth. If I'm going to have the earth, let it let it devour me. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. It kind of makes sense, though. One, this being triple distilled, this being double distilled. Yeah, this one being ex-bourbon. We don't know exactly what fill, but... Yeah. Yeah. Gets a little bit more. Get a little bit more of that nice multi-depth... We went so long without you being weird. That was only a little weird. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So new Michael Collins. This one's this one's gone. If you see this around and you really like this one, you should probably grab some. Uh, someone came into our store. Or he didn't even come in. He called from like two states away. Found out we had this. Drove up. And drove up to get a case. A whole case? A whole case. You want to know what's fucked up though? What? My manager broke four of them before he got there. Oh, no. <laughs> and it's, this version is never, ever going to be produced again. All right. That's, that was a sad day. Yeah. That was a sad day. Yeah, so. soak, it, soak it up out of the carpet. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Until next time, though, this has been the Rock Cut Review. Yes. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I'm finishing up with the original Michael Collins. I'll finish off with the newer one. Makes sense. Make sure. Wait, wait. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe first. Now you say your piece. Now make sure to stay safe, stay healthy, and stay rotten. Yeah.